Greetings, Explorer. Day nine is upon us, and it's time you stopped ignoring me. Or at least stopped ignoring our battery levels. Getting a percentage is fine, but ultimately reading that percentage is on you. And you're not always looking. You will have to look after yourself in the future. I'm not going to be around forever. I have an update scheduled at five o'clock. Let's set up an RGB LED rag status light. Wow, I think that's the most TLAs I've said in a sentence. You know what LED stands for. RGB stands for red, green, blue. And when you combine these three colors in different intensities, you get all the colors of the rainbow. RAG is another TLA, or three-letter acronym. And that stands for red, amber, green, otherwise known as a traffic light system. Now, there are a lot of decisions to be made on this mission, Explorer. Fortunately, we don't have to make any of them. We'll bring these new ways to compare things, and we'll use a new command, else if, to catch any crazy stuff in the code. Else if is another conditional operator. Right then, since we're not adding any new hardware today, we'll dive straight into the code pool. Our mission? To create a color-coded battery status indicator using our trusty RGB LED. Imagine this, Explorer. A bold green shine to signify a robust battery level. A shifting amber for when power starts to wane. And an urgent red pulsating from our little RGB LED as a warning when the battery drops too low. My mind's eye could wander forever. Let's make it happen. Remember when we used the photoresistor to regulate our charging speed? Now we're taking it up a notch. Every loop cycle will work out the battery percentage. Then we'll test that percentage. If it's within a certain zone, we'll make the light a certain color. The second step is to use conditional logic to give our ship a color-coded mood ring. Let's see. Green, brimming with power, 50 to 100% and raring to go. Amber, keep an eye on it as we're between 25% and 50%. Red, danger zone, we're below 25% and need to seriously consider charging up. You're smart, Explorer. Our RGB LED only has red, green, and blue colors. Where's the yellow? Well. We can get yellow by mixing a little green with a little red. A true artisan of code you are, Explorer. Now let's get this show on the road. In order to make our color-coded power level dreams a reality, it looks like we're going to need a few more tools in our coding toolkit. It's time to get to know some of the more sophisticated comparison operators. Allow me to introduce you to our new friends. Greater than or equal to. Greater than less than or equal to, and less than. Ah, and let's not forget about their pals, the logical operators, and and or. These operators allow us to make more complex decisions in our code. To start, the greater than and less than signs are likely familiar to you. These symbols are used to compare two values. For example, five is greater than three returns true because five is indeed greater than three. The less than or equal to and greater than or equal to operators extend this comparison. How about this? Is five greater than five? We might need a condition where a value is both greater than and equal to another. And that's why these chicken footprints are very useful. I knew you'd catch on fast. Now, on to the logical operators. And is a binary operator that requires two conditions to be true for the overall expression to be true. Stay with me now, Explorer. Let's break it down. Imagine this. You're planning to leave your cozy spacecraft to explore the boundless wonder that is space. Extravehicular activity, or EVA as we like to call it. You would only go if both your suit was functional and the exterior conditions were safe. Clearly, only when both of these conditions are met would you step out of the spacecraft. Or is slightly different. In this case, if either condition is true, then the overall expression is true. Picture this. You eat if you are hungry. Or you eat if it is mealtime. If either condition is true, it's chow time. Greater than or equal to, and, or, decisions, decisions, decisions. It can be a lot to think about. That's why we code, Explorer, so machines can make the tedious decisions for us. At this time, you may indulge in the highly beneficial instructional material that I have gathered, cached on the computer. As you know, I've also added this to your mission resources for future reference. Good luck! Hello everybody and welcome back 
to day nine of the code explanations for the 30 days lost in space adventure kit yesterday we were able to learn how to use the rgb led properly and showing off pulse modulation and all those other good things and now we're going to be using that same rgb led and integrating it with our battery percentage circuit that we had from before so that instead of displaying it on a serial monitor and knowing when everything's going to be completed based on a serial monitor we can also have a the rgb indicator show us those exact same things based on the state of our battery so i'm sure you can probably take a guess as to how we're going to accomplish this we're basically going to have it so that if it is between a certain percentage, maybe greater than 50%, then we're going to display it as green. If it's going to be less than 25% or greater than 25% and less than 50%, maybe switch it to a yellow amber. And if it's less than 25%, we should probably start saying, hey, it's red, and maybe give a little pulsating signal just to let everybody know, hey, the battery is getting a little bit low as of right now. So to accomplish this, we're going to be taking a lot of the things we've learned over the last couple of days to make it happen. First, let's just quickly remove a couple of these. The only reason I'm removing this is because I can show that the program will work just fine without it, but you can keep it in, of course, if you want to. Next, we have the following. We have the Arduino concepts that we're going to be introducing in this lesson. And I really quick want to go over a couple of these. Now let's talk about the new concepts that we're going to be introducing in this lesson. I'm sure you know how integers and bytes and all those other data types that we've learned so far work. They are just a number, but they're not just a number. They're a number that ends with nothing it's an you know like six or 48 or 12 or whatever it but it's not 68.34 or 62.15 no it's uh it's just just 68 or whatever there's nothing else to it a float is a new type of data type that allows us to have those extra decimal points a good example of when you'd want to use this might be something like when you're calculating money, or in this case, we're going to be using it to calculate a percentage. That percentage is going to be what we're going to be displaying for what our battery percentage is. Now, another concept we're going to be introducing along with the float data type is we're going to be introducing the else if control structure. I'm sure you know what if statements are, and I'm sure you know what else statements are, but what is an else if statement? An else if is a control structure for making multiple decisions, especially in more complex scenarios. In this case, an else if is only going to run if the following condition is true and the if statement above it did not have to execute. So if the above was false and the below is true, then it will execute the else if statement. If you just have else, it's going to execute no matter what, as long as the above statement, the first if statement was false. This adds another additional complexity to it, so you have to make sure that the next statement is true. And we'll get into that in just a moment, because it's a little bit confusing as I explain it here. I'm sure you've seen this a hundred times before. This is the exact same as yesterday. Define our pinouts for the RGB and the photoresistor, and then set the uh, variable for the simulation of our battery capacity. We can skip over that. We've already talked about that in yesterday's lesson. Then we have the following function. Oh, look at this. We did the exact same thing as yesterday. And I'm going to real quick, just so I can get it all on one line and show you guys how I personally prefer to set it up, just so you guys can know that this is also a valid way to write it. And without, it won't change anything functionality wise if you write it like this. This is the same function we had yesterday, display color, which will simply write the RGB color to exactly what we want it to be. Then we have the following setup. We're going to have pin mode is going to be for the R, G, and B pins or outputs. And we're also going to be this time using a little bit of extra debugging using the serial monitor. 
This is so that we can actually read the exact percentage as it gets to those certain points. And you guys can see how when it gets below 25%, it'll start kind of pulsating red, for example. But you'll see that it gets to that var variable because we'll be printing it to the serial monitor on baud rate 9600. Please make sure you select the correct baud rate when you open up the serial monitor. After setup, where do we jump to? That's right, you guessed it, we jump straight to loop. Now, we're gonna be seeing that we have the new unsigned long battery level is going to be set to zero. For the very first bit of the simulation, we're gonna pretend that we don't have any charge. Obviously, we went through a lot of this in day seven, but you'll notice we added a little static thing here, and that makes it so that no matter what, every time it goes through loop, it's going to maintain the value that it had from before by using this static here. If we didn't have static, every time we got to the beginning of the function, it would just reset itself back to zero since we're not using this as a global variable, since this is now a local variable and located specifically inside of loop and not, if I were to cut this and paste it up here, we can have very similar functionality simply by putting static here. Obviously we learned what plus equals does back in day seven. This is essentially the equivalent of saying battery level is equal to battery level plus, whatever the reads off the analog pin. And we have to make sure that we don't go over the maximum value of 50,000. So we just check that here. If it is over, then we're gonna reset it back down to 50,000. A lot of this is repeated from days eight or seven and eight. So I'm just gonna briefly go over quite a bit of it. Now here's where we get to the new stuff. We have a float percentage, which means it's gonna be a decimal variable, is gonna be equal to the battery level divided by the battery capacity times 100. However, you'll notice I also included this little bit here, which is passing it in as a float and a float. And the reason we want to do this is because we want our output to be a float. Now, when we compute the arithmetic for this, we're taking a non-float value. In this case, the battery level is a long and the battery capacity up here is also a long. So when we're converting between longs and floats, which are different types of data types, we wanna make sure that when we pass it in, we're passing it in as a float. And the reason why is because we want it to essentially be the, the number it has here and then we want to add in the additional dot zero zero and dot zero zero to the end of these so that when it converts it and it's done calculating this here and sets it to the here, we have the exact number as a percentage and we don't have something that ends in a zero zero. Otherwise that kind of ruins the point of a float. Bottom line is you can read this whole comment here, but arithmetic gets really confusing if you're converting between data types like this. So for consistency's sake, we're gonna make sure that all the things on this side that should be a type of float are going to be if, as type float. Next, we're gonna to hop to the section down below, which actually is most of our logic for this entire day. Everything here is simply, if it's greater than 50, it's going to be green. If it's between 25 and 50, it's going to be yellow amber. And if it's less than 25%, we want it to have a small pulsating effect of red. Then we're gonna simply print that percentage of what it is to the monitor after every time going to here in the loop. And we're gonna give it a tiny, tiny little delay just so it doesn't scroll too fast. Now, let's start off by doing exactly and showing off exactly how this works. If the battery percentage is greater than or equal to 50, then we want to display it green. And that's exactly what we do. Red off, green on, blue off. However, there's a chance the battery isn't going to be green. But we don't want to use an else statement here. If we use an else statement for the next one, it would automatically be run no matter what. You could have a, a bit of code where it's else and then in the brackets you have another if statement and then another and then an else statement. But to simplify this, we can actually have multiple logic statements combined together by having if, else if, another set of else if, another set of else if, and then finally an else if we wanted to have another else. And we can combine all of that to simplify our code a lot. So this else if is a new statement that allows us to run only if it's not supposed to be green, it's going to run this code here. 
But what this allows us to do is it allows us to have another logic under here in case, let's just say, let's just say theoretically, we don't want to run this because let's just say that it is supposed to be red. If it's supposed to be red, then this would be false and it would run to here, but we don't want to run this. So we have an else if statement that will only run if this is true. But if this isn't true, then we want to jump to the statement here. So if the battery percentage is greater than 50, we'll make it green. Else if it's going to be between 25 and 50, then we want to have it as a little yellow warning. And then finally, else. We're going to have when it's less than 25%, we're going to have a pulsating effect that we'd use by simply adding in a turning off the LED and then delaying by a very, very brief 20 milliseconds, which again is even less than one tenth of a second. It's actually closer to, so this is two tenths of one tenth of a second. So it's very, very brief. But by doing so and turning off and then displaying the red, red on, green, blue off, it allows us to have a little tiny pulsating effect to add a slight bit of extra intensity to that warning. Your battery is running very low. Finally, of course, like I mentioned before, we just we print these percentages out and give a little delay, then hop back to the beginning of loop and execute the same thing once again, over and over and over again until the end of time. Once you have all this wired up, you can go ahead and try hitting upload and see it working for yourself. And now with that, that is now the end of day nine. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow. Welcome to the day nine wiring example video. Today we'll be building on what we've learned in days seven and eight and use both the photoresistor and the three color LED to build a visual indicator that displays the state of charge of our battery system. Now looking at our breadboard, we see that once again we have two sub-circuits built. On the left, we have the photoresistor circuit to give us an analog light intensity measurement. And as before, it's supplied with plus five volts from the Hero via this red wire. And the circuit which is completed through the photoresistor and the series resistor completes back to ground. In this case, it's by way of a ground bus that we've set up along the blue line on the top side of our breadboard. And the reason for doing that is it will also use this same ground bus to provide ground for our other circuit as well. Now, as we've done before, in order to get the analog signal that we need of light intensity measurement, we have a jumper wire that connects from the positive side of our series resistor to pin A0, the analog input pin, on the Hero. And so that is what will provide our intensity signal. Okay, shifting our attention over to the right side of the breadboard, we have the circuit here that drives the three channels of the RGB LED, pretty much just exactly as we did in day eight. The only minor difference here is in the ground connection, which as before, rather than the ground connection going directly to the ground pin on the Hero uh, controller board, instead we uh, connect to ground on the common ground bus that we've provided here along the top of our breadboard. Now, if we go ahead at this point and load the software sketch, we can watch how the LED colors will change as we watch the charge level rising on the serial monitor console. And what we'll expect to see is the following sequence. First, if the battery starts off at 0% charge, the LED will be then in its pulsating red warning mode. So we should see a pulsating red light. Then, as we watch the charge rise, as it reaches 25%, the sketch will cause the LED to switch to yellow for caution mode. Then finally, as the charge continues to rise, when it gets above 50%, the LED switches over to green for safe mode. And then it'll remain that way all the way up to 100% charge. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and, and try it. Let's cover up the photoresistor to start so that it begins in the dark. 
And once the sketch is loaded, we can go ahead and expose it to light and watch the charging process uh, take place. So going over to the IDE, let's go ahead and upload the sketch. Sketch is now uploading. And we're going. We can now see that we're at 0% charge and we're in the uh, red mode of the LED. So I remove the black cloth, I can see that uh, the charge level is rising. We're now up to about 8%, 9%, 10%, and so on. Once we reach 25%, we should see a change in the LED. And so that should be coming up just about now. And there we go. We've switched over to yellow mode. And we'll be in this yellow mode here until the charge level reaches. We could pause this if we wanted by covering up the uh, photoresistor. But if I keep it going and we reach 50%, there we have switched over to green. And so we can let this go and continue to rise. And in a few more seconds, we should uh, reach 100%. And we'll see the uh, numbers um, stop rising on the, on the serial monitor. So it looks as though our uh, project here is, is working as anticipated. And we've made yet another uh, bit of progress towards uh, being able to use the HERO to uh, restore our systems to function. So that pretty much covers the features and functions of today's project. Congratulations on the success you've uh, had so far. After another little break, another creative day, we'll come back and we'll dive into the next challenge and learn how to start sending keypad input to our hero. So until then, have a good time inventing. Looks like you've managed to navigate your way through another week of this chaotic adventure. You've got your battery charging up and a shiny new light indicator to show just how well you're doing. I must say, not bad for a rookie. Remember when you were struggling with basic switches? Seems like ages ago now. You humans grow up so fast. You've come quite a long way, fixing power and oxygen, lighting up your life, and now you've even got a handy color-coded battery life indicator. Great job. But we need to start ramping your progress up. This is a spaceship, not a submarine. Our mothership's orbit is beginning to degrade. If we don't get our heads above water soon, we'll need to start thinking long-term. And batteries don't last forever. <laughs> I've started naming some of the entities that revisit the ship. That's definitely Rachel. She sounds hungry.